He's been called the dirtiest player in the NFL. Who is he? Jeff. And Dominican Sue, Detroit Lions, one of the best defenders in the NFL, certainly one of the dirtiest by far, least liked by far. Least liked by the players, by the fans, by, by the players, by everybody. By everybody. By everybody. <laughs> when you think of the dirtiest player in the NFL, I go back and I think of Conrad Dover. Right. Right? Nobody saw what he did. But this guy, the dirty stuff he does is right in Macy's window. He does it, like, to the quarterback where everybody can see what he does. Well, well, but here, here's the issue, though, right? He's going to hurt somebody someday. He's going to end somebody's career if he keeps behaving the way that he does behave now. We don't know much about him, aside from what he does on the field. This is one of the first times that he's letting people in. Yeah, well, I'm a longtime Lions fan. I know Bob Woodruff who did the story. He's a longtime Lions fan, so I'm eager to see who this guy really is. He is a dirty player. He's calm. He never raises his voice, really. This guy is just a, a ticking time bomb. People have a skewed view of who I am. A lot of people have villainized me. Yeah, he is a dirty player. And what he did was a dirty move. They say I'm a dirty player. And they kind of leave it at that. They don't look further into the lens. This is a highly intelligent person. This is a, a good person. It's easy for people to misunderstand who Ndamukong Sue is because you see two distinctly different sides of him. I flip that switch. There is this behemoth, like a tornado in a uniform. When you unleash him, there's no telling what kind of destruction he could leave in his way. He looks like a young Reggie White. Sue on a sack. He's had some plays where you're like, ooh. Sue ripped Jay Cutler's helmet off. Number 90 is disqualified. Come on, man. This is not wrestling. Does he have to change the way he plays? Absolutely. He's being who he is. If you don't like that, tough. When people have the opportunity to be unbiased and unfiltered, they'll get to know who I am as a person and who Indominus Sue is. Portland, Oregon. On January 6, 1987, a boy was born and given the name Indomitian. I brought the name up because uh, uh, Damukong is my grandfather's name. It definitely was hard. My, I remember my first grade teacher, I could spell it, but she couldn't pronounce it. So it was definitely a, a tricky one. Both my parents came from third world countries. Mom being Jamaican, my dad being Cameroonian. Sue's father was an engineer and his mother a school teacher. Despite separating when he was two, Together, they taught Ndamukin and his older sister a valuable lesson. We both come from a disciplined cultural background. I'm from Africa. Discipline is very important to us. Being disciplined is extremely important. In raising kids, you have to instill those things in them early on. If they wanted to play sports, schoolwork had to be done, and it had to be quality work. And when the homework was done, it was time for the family sport soccer because <laughs> that's all the sport we knew he started when he was around three years old he had a big foot when i mean a big foot that means when he shoots nobody will touch the ball go after the ball <laughs> even at a young age one characteristic stood out about his play how aggressive he was he played the game like it was supposed to be played. Of course, he would get a lot of yellow cards, too, so, but, you know, <laughs> that's part of the game. From what I hear, that you've got a lot more red cards playing soccer because people are bouncing off you in the assumption <laughs> by, the, by the refs was that you're fouling them. Yeah, no, nah, strong feet. I mean, I was able to always stay on, stay on my feet, and uh, little kids come over and... Uh, just bump into me and, and I swat them away like a fly or, or they just hit me and, and I continue to run down the field. Unable to use his hands on the soccer field, 
He made up for it around the house. I just love building things, tearing things down, and putting them back together. He was probably about five or six, and our telephone wouldn't work. And he picked the phone up, turned it upside down, opened it, took the wire apart, and I saw him doing that, and I screamed at him. I put it back together, and she, she couldn't be too upset because it, it still worked. The biggest thing that allowed me to do that is a photographic memory. That's something that I, I've been fortunate enough to have that take it apart, put something together, just take those mental pictures. By the time Ndamukong was in eighth grade, he had begun to enjoy watching a different kind of football. What I saw of it on TV when he would watch just looked very dangerous to me. I couldn't figure out, well, why are all these guys piling on top of each other? I wanted to go out for football my freshman year. She was, no, I can't go out. I said, no, I don't want you to play because it's too rough. And he says, no, I'm going to be the one doing the hurting. He came home and told me, Dad, no, you don't have to be afraid. You know, I, I'm, the pe I'm the person that everybody gets scared of. You know, I can hit them and don't get blamed for it. Finally, I said to him, I said, well, look, if you can do well in, with your grades, 3.0 or better, then I'll let you play. And so, in the fall of 2002, in Dominican's sophomore year, he made his high school football debut. I definitely think some of the athleticism and uh, being able to maneuver around guys, play through guys, it was something that I had an advantage of that people didn't expect. The whole world knew about this kid in Portland, Oregon that was playing football. And I'm thinking to myself, now, why are these people writing my son about playing football? You have a photographic memory. Uh -huh. Give me some of the scenes out here. Give me exactly where you're running, how you're mm -hmm. tackling, who you saw. So you'll see me initially come out of my stance, pop straight up, and then just start swimming, guys. My favorite move was a swim. There's a couple of them. I would just bull rush and just throw a guy to the side. My height and weight when I was here was roughly about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, During football season, I was anywhere from 285, 290. So do a quick sprint for me. Let me see your speed. <laughs> you going to race me? You want me to? Let's go 100. 100? Yeah. All right. Ready, set, go. <laughs> Oh, you're just not even trying. <laughs> He's not even. <laughs> Victory. In the fall of 2004, Sue's final season at Grant, Division I schools were calling, and Sue was widely considered the top football recruit in the state of Oregon. But then came the final game of his high school career. What was it that you did exactly? Uh, I threw a punch because uh, two guys tried to take my knee yeah, out. Yeah, really? To the, uh, so to he the, tried to take your, your knee tried out? Tried to take my uh, Well, one guy took my knee out, and I was. On purpose? On purpose, yeah. So, and then what? What'd you do? And I just, I just hit him. Hit Where? Him as hard as I could in his face. He was such a quiet kid. Sometimes you never knew what he was feeling. And he would hold things inside. And then when he couldn't deal with it anymore, he would just explode. The ref kicked us both out. And so I threw my helmet. I was frustrated and, and went in the back of the locker room. And the, for whatever reason, opposing fan of the other team. So that's why you'll never go far in life. It was just one of those things that, that kind of stuck out to you, just with kind of right in your face and making you out to be the villain. He would be anything but that in college. He attended the University of Nebraska, where he was a model student in the engineering school. As for his time spent on the football field, he would only be known for one thing, dominance. He's hurt. Colt McCoy, like a rag. Sue harnessed his intensity and aggressive style of play to become one of the most dominant college football players of all time. And he is thrown down. By his senior season in 2009, 
He was an All-American, AP Player of the Year, and even a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. But one of his prouder moments was in December 2009, when he earned an engineering degree. I didn't want to be a typical football player and just kind of whiz by. I wanted to make sure I, I got that, that piece of paper, and uh, it, it meant a lot more than, than getting a football award. April 22nd, 2010. The quiet engineering student who grew up as a soccer player is about to walk onto football's biggest stage. With the second pick in the 2010 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Ndamukong Sue, defensive tackle of Nebraska. The Detroit Lions had only won two games in the last two years and were seen as the pushovers of the NFL. The Detroit Lions saw in Ndamukong Sue an attitude that could help change the overall perception of the Detroit Lions as an organization. And they're very excited for me to come, and I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I know that the great Detroit fans are looking forward to me, and I'm looking forward to them. On a scale from 1 to 10, his aggression is probably a 13 or 14. It only took until his third preseason game for that aggression to show up, and Browns quarterback Jake DeLome had a front row seat. I remember covering that game and wondering if he actually decapitated Jake DeLone. After the play was made, he chose no remorse. And that tipped it off that this is going to be a different dude. You know, this is a guy who's going to play by his own rules. I flipped that switch, and I'm in between the white lines. It's run with your head cut off. At six foot four, 305 pounds, Sue was becoming the most feared player in the league. But his aggression would cost him with the entire nation watching. In the 90s, Thanksgiving 2011, what happened that day? Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, June 2014. And Sue has brought his father to see the World Cup. And between matches, they hit the beach. I would say people have a very confused view of, of, of who I am as a person. People feel like I'm unapproachable or things of that sort, and I'm not a nice person. And that's far from the truth. But the truth is that there is another side to this man. And he wears number 90 for the Detroit Lions. On a scale from 1 to 10, his aggression is probably a 13 or 14. It's like a pit bull has been fed for three days. At 6 foot 4, 305 pounds, the 27-year-old Sue is the premier defensive tackle in the game, thanks to his physical style of play. Honestly, I feel that I, I don't play too differently. I just play with a little bit more aggression. I really see it as blue-collar football, as they played back in the day. But it's a new day in the NFL. Sue was fined twice in his rookie season, first for this hit against Jake DeLome. Then, in week 13, for this hit against Jay Cutler. Sue was then fined a third time in the 2011 preseason for this hit on Andy Dalton. All personal fouls, costing him over $42,000. How would you describe your aggressiveness? I would say it's controlled, um, and it's in a state to where it's close to the edge, but never falling off. But you have gone over that line. Mm -hmm. You have kept playing after the whistle blows. Yeah. Thanksgiving Day, 2011, Detroit's traditional home game. The entire nation was watching a close game early in the third quarter. Here's the snap. Rodgers looking, lofts, runs out of the end zone, through the hands of Trevor, incomplete. And now late flag thrown. There's some issue between Ndamukong Sue and Evan Dietrich Smith at the end of the play.
after the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 90 for kicking. Number 90 is disqualified. Whoa. That is when, all of a sudden, the perception of the of the player who's just has a tendency to cross the line at times kind of morph into a, a new reality that, you know what, the rules maybe don't apply to me. What happened that day? Uh, just over-emotional. Um, a lot of things took place in, in, in that span of first half and into the third quarter. Um, and. I just kind of lost my cool, and uh, and at this point in time, I, I just know it was a mistake uh, that that I have to live with for the rest of my life. What was your mistake? Just emotions, just being too high and not being controlled. Uh, that's fine, I understand it, but uh, I'll never let that mistake define me. But it has. Sue was suspended by the NFL for two games without pay for what would come to be known as the stomp. When you stomp on a guy on Thanksgiving, the casual football fan is aware of you. Road rage is what it was. He just snapped. You can't do that. Is this the worst time and the worst thing that he could have done, basically, in a football game to show the nation that, yeah, uh, he is a dirty player? They over-exaggerated the incident. But on the other hand, I think it was important for him to reflect on what really had happened so that it wouldn't happen again. It did happen again. Since the stomp, Sue has been fined five times by the NFL for on-field incidents. When you develop that reputation that Dominican Sue has, he, he's not going to get the benefit of the doubt. Sue needs to realize this. Every camera is focused on Dominican Sue because they're looking for the stomp 2.0. The media has an opportunity to paint their own picture of me, which is at times very, very unfair, but it sells viewership. A lot of people have villainized me, um, and, and that, that's from reading things and seeing one incident. But you've gotten more than $200,000 in fines, almost a quarter million. Do you think you're being treated unfairly, more intensely than anyone else? I don't ever look at it like that because at the, at, the, at the end of the day, I'm on a higher pedestal than some other guys because I'm seen as one of the top guys in the league. And so I'm held to a higher standard. When a player is vilified, often the person is as well. Sue has a number of highly publicized traffic violations, but has no criminal record and has never violated the NFL's personal conduct policy. I'm not as open. Um, because I don't trust everybody and, and people would, you would think people would respect that, but it's not always seen that way. We knew early on that Indomitian and Sue was a web of contradictions. You have the physical behemoth there on the field and this shy, introverted kid. People are always going to be trying to figure out what is Indomitian and Sue really like. Now entering his fifth season, one of the NFL's greatest players remains one of its greatest mysteries. And in the end, all we are left with is what the man named Sue tells us. Who I am is somebody that's caring, yet very competitive, and loves winning, and really just a quiet kid. But I'm not giving up my intensity. I'm giving up nothing.